Hello everybody, welcome to the Wonky Angle, where I talk about electronic music, both new and old. And today I'm talking about the new album from Anna Meredith, Fibs. So, um, I'll admit I don't exactly have a long-running background with Anna Meredith. Apparently he's a classical composer who makes electronic music that dabbles into art pop and experimental rock. I'd heard of her before, since a few years ago she came out with an album called Varmints? Which, uh, Spectrum Pulse gave a rave 9 out of 10 review. Although, uh, at the time, for whatever reason, I wasn't paying enough attention. Maybe because I was too busy fawning over the Avalanche's comeback or something. <laughs> yeah, I slept on it, didn't get around to hearing it until preparing for this video, and I wasn't paying attention to this release super closely either, until this album dropped, and that exact day, assumingly after Mark had listened to it for the first time, he immediately hit me up and told me not to sleep on it this time. And four days later, already had a, a, another rave 9 out of 10 review uh, for it up. Alright then, better check this out, huh? Well, I first listened to Varmints to catch myself up, and that album was... a lot. I'm not sure where I stand on it yet, personal enjoyment-wise, given now I've only listened to it, like, once and a half. And I'm told that is the kind of album that probably needs time to fully grow on you. Had a couple of moments I was iffy on. But it, it was a blend of a lot of different genres, elements of electronic music mixed with rock and pop and classical, and all put together in a fairly accessible, if still very experimental and forward-thinking framework. I'll give it this. Right from the outset, he's got uh, quite the well-established musical identity, and a lot of these melodies were pretty great and attached to pretty out-of-the-box ideas. He also put out this uh, Antonio Vivaldi tribute concept album uh, last year called Anno Four Seasons. I skipped over that for the time being. And you go back to it later if people <laughs> really want to bug me about that, but I don't know. But yeah, I guess that brings us to this second studio album here, Fibs. While I wasn't expecting to be as enthusiastic about it as Mark was, his score definitely had me hyped up, and... I think 2019 could use more albums in the 8 range or higher. I've not gotten a lot of those this year. So may as well get into it. What did we get with Fibs? Well, uh, similarly, there was a lot to digest here, but I will say right from the outset this was a much more immediate listen. While fundamentally the same album as Varmints also shows improvement across the board. Varmints production seems a little flat in comparison to this. That album might have been a more challenging listen, but this one feels more vibrant, more well-balanced, and just as fun, creative, and memorable a listen. Yeah, the hype is deserved on this one. It's, it's pretty great. It's not a 9 for me, it's not my favorite album of the year, but it's definitely going to be on the year-end list somewhere. May as well go into individual tracks, there's plenty of variety here. Uh, there's instrumental tracks, there's tracks with vocals, I'm assuming handled by Meredith herself, with the occasional male guest vocalist to sing the exact same melody as her but an octave below. There are tracks that are super bright and energetic, there's tracks that are more low-key, they all have an abstract feel to them that's often very loud and in your face, but they all still have space for proper melodies. Take a track like the opener, Sawbones. Very uh, loud and brash track with bright, flashy leads and some other very abrasive and mix-filling, just gigantic other leads as well that feel very Sophie-ish. Constantly building up and changing into new sections, even accompanied by guitars and acoustic drumming. There's a ton going on. But it all fits perfectly into the mix in a way that none of these elements clash. Pretty damn impressive, and a solid tone setter for what you're getting into with this album. And you get Inhale Exhale, our first vocal track. It's this very fast-paced and erotic synth-pop track that gives me some very strong, like, Patricia Taxon Doraemon vibes, albeit with higher production values. <laughs> Got a lot of these quick, rhythmic, big trance leads, a couple of acid-influenced bass lines and some other acidy textures, and the melodies are all really catchy and satisfying, and the way it builds up is really uplifting, even if the track feels super anxiety-ridden. And interestingly, a lot of the vocal tracks on here were also big favorites. All the more energetic ones, no less. Killjoy was excellent. All its herky-jerky rhythms going up against these light and breezy and cheerful melodies. And that quirky chorus is easily the biggest earworm on the album. Back up, 
Kill Joy. Do it. Don't go there. Yeah, that's a great track. And I really liked uh, Divining as well. This is a weird one to describe. All its stuttering synth patterns going up against some smoother pads as it goes on. And later some intense bass lines and offbeat percussion patterns. The kind of mix that feels awkward, but in a good way. And it just keeps building up and building up to almost an epic level by the end, even despite the percussion staying kind of slow and sparse underneath. It's just that right mix of being weird, but also being really satisfying. In general though, the lower key moments on this album tended to be lower points for me. The track Ribbons was, uh, it was pretty, a uh, really smooth mix of the vocals with ambient pads and guitars with lumpy and lumbering bass lines and very minimal IDM-ish percussion, though the chorus of uh-oh, uh-oh, wasn't that satisfying. It brought it down a little bit for me. Probably the track I least look forward to whenever I put this on, even if its particular blend is pretty interesting and engaging, and again, I can easily remember the tune to it. And the closer Unfurl, uh, that one's better, has some glassier organ-like tones that are cool, and it works well as an ending pacing-wise, though again, it wasn't one of the biggest highlights on here or one that grabbed my attention as much as some of these other ones. To make it absolutely clear though, both of these tracks, in spite of probably being my least favorites, are still really good. They got interesting mixes of sounds, they have plenty of emotion put into them, the production and mixing is as spot on as it is everywhere else. There are just other tracks on this album that got more of a visceral rush out of me, and that's it. The two more low-key instrumentals on here were both better. For instance, Kalyon uh, may stay relatively low-key the whole time, but just kind of meanders through all its various sleek synth tones in an abstract way and wanders from pattern to pattern as it goes along, just kind of going wherever it wants, though still having time for plenty of epic 80s-ish climaxes that sound like something you'd hear out of someone like, I don't know, Paul Basic, albeit with much smoother synth choices. And Moon Moons <laughs> starts out like an ambient interlude or something, just one bassy pad accompanied by plinky arpeggios and a violin solo. Lindsay Sterling, eat your heart out. Though about halfway through, it starts to really intensify and get this dark and stormy quality to it, almost feeling like it's about to deliver on some big symphonic bombast before eventually returning to the same peaceful patterns heard previously. Oh, and that's also not counting the more energetic instrumentals here. These were all great. Well, Bump took a while to grow on me. Its brash horn blares and strange, lumbering, cartoonish rhythms. Initially, they were kind of off-putting to me, kind of in the same way a lot of the stuff on Varmints was. Like, its use of the horns had kind of a similar, subtle, irritating quality to it that the track Nautilus did. Sorry, I, I thought that track was just alright, I didn't love it, like everyone else seemed to. But point is, not only did those horns eventually grow on me, uh, Bump's awkwardly, constantly shifting beats had a lot more progression and freakiness, its unpredictability and weirdness added some extra flavor to this album that was very much welcome. But the last two instrumentals I haven't mentioned were both great. Limpet is just a straight instrumental pop rock tune. Wasn't sure I'd like it when I first heard it, with all its distorted guitars and banging acoustic beats. Almost felt a little out of place on here, but it quickly grew to become one of my favorites. Its build-up and payoffs are ridiculously satisfying and soaring. It just has this amazing triumphant quality to it. And the penultimate track, Paramour, Paramour? <laughs> Another kind of weird track that turns out to be downright epic, starting out subtle with lots of really fast-paced neurotic synth arpeggios laying on, layered on top of each other, crescendoing into sections with lots of distorted guitars and some subtle tubas. <laughs> Parts with big symphonic horn sections that have this bombastic movie trailer-like quality to them, even some xylophony tones later on which were a nice touch. One of the wildest and most dense tracks on the album, and that should be saying something. So yeah, uh, that's every track on Fibs. Overall, yeah, this this album is great. <laughs> Not much I have to say negatively about it. I, I guess I don't love every track, though I do at least like them all. Also not sure how it'll fare replay value-wise. I wouldn't be totally surprised if this turns out like that last Matmos album, which was amazing when it dropped, and still is, but I've only listened to it like twice since my video. 
I don't know. But this is a highly creative and forward-thinking album from a very unique artist. There's plenty of instrumental variety. The melodies are all really good and every track builds up and pays off in a satisfying way. The production is pitch perfect, like pretty much across the board. It's an album that gets better the closer I listen to it, but doesn't necessarily require that for me to enjoy it. It's a wild listening experience that feels perpetually anxiety-ridden, but simultaneously bright and colorful and fun and emotional in all the right ways, and yeah, it's pretty great. Check it out. I'm overall feeling an 8.5 out of 10. But of course, this is just my opinion. You can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts. So leave the comments in the comment thing down there. Shout out to my Patreon supporters. They're awesome people. You want to add yourself to that list or make me a review something, a link to my Patreon is in the description. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time. Thank you.